It's good to see all of you this morning, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for your courtesies. And I'm delighted to uh, be here in this post-election atmosphere. <laughs> and uh, we're still trying to figure out what that atmosphere is, but uh, it uh, was a, an amazing election last night. And what it reflects is that uh, our democratic system of hard-fought elections and peaceful transition of power is really the envy of the world. And uh, both sides competed hard, hard-fought contest, and then the call acknowledging the victor, and we proceed to unite our country and move forward. And while that happens in Washington, what we do in Arkansas is even uh, just as significant in terms of our budget process because our system of budgeting in Arkansas is one of the best in the United States of America. It is designed for restraint and responsibility in government spending. We control spending in order to balance the budget and to safeguard against overspending even in uncertain economic times. So to accomplish these goals, tough choices are required in a budget. It does not take a PhD in economics to know that we can't say yes to every spending need. And we should also not say yes to every tax cut idea. We have to set priorities and we have to measure results. Under law, it is required of the governor to present a balanced budget to the General Assembly. That's why I'm here today. And this morning, I'll present a budget that is balanced identifies savings, sets the stage for reform, and meets the most critical needs of our state. My budget team, led by Director Larry Walther and Budget Director Duncan Baird, will follow with a more detailed line-by-line -line presentation of the budget and then answer any questions. Uh, my purpose today is to give you the broad outline of the priorities in the budget, where the reform is, where the savings are, and to give an overview uh, that precedes uh, the presentation by the budget team. We all look forward to working with the General Assembly as we jointly and cooperatively address the needs of our state. First, the budget that is presented incorporates the savings that we have already achieved. This is the result of our hiring freeze. It's the result of various efficiency efforts that you've approved in combining and eliminating agencies. And it's the result of the reduction in the number of state employees through, through the creative sale of the home health business unit within the Department of Health. As a result of these executive actions supported by the legislature, we have reduced the number of filled positions in state agencies that report to me by over 1,000, which is a 4% reduction in the number of state employees. We have consolidated five state agencies. And when we sold the home health business unit to the private sector, we had a net return to the taxpayers of $24 million when the sale was closed. All of this without reducing or compromising the delivery of services to the people of Arkansas. Today's budget not only incorporates the savings, but it also proposes additional consolidations, such as War Memorial Stadium joining the Department of Parks and Tourism. This will strengthen the mission of War Memorial, provide a brighter future, and it will reduce the taxpayer subsidy. I expect to have additional efficiency proposals as we get closer to the session. The savings aspect of the budget also includes a savings of $50 million at the Department of Human Services. This $50 million in savings will offset a portion of the $110 million in normal growth in the delivery of health care. This savings is important and requires the support of the General Assembly. And we cannot be successful in this budget and the savings if the rules to implement these reforms are not approved in a timely fashion by the General Assembly. And I'm grateful for your cooperation as you proceed to review those rule changes to accomplish those savings. So that's the savings part of the budget. Now let me talk about the reform part of the proposed budget. The budget also includes a significant and necessary measure in terms of reform. This includes higher education, mental health reform, quality assurance measures in the delivery of pre-K education, 
and a new and improved state pay plan. The new funding model for higher education rewards institutions for student success and not just for student enrollment. My budget increases funding for higher education by $10 million in the second year of the biennium. And this increase is conditioned on passage of the funding reform bill. The budget also includes $5 million per year in the reform of our mental health system that results in those with mental health issues currently inundating our county jails and prisons. My proposal includes sufficient funding for three crisis stabilization centers as recommended by the Criminal Justice Oversight Task Force of this legislature. These new centers will help local law enforcement and first responders deal with mentally ill in our communities. It will give them the resources they need to more effectively deal with people in need and without drawing on the resources of local jails. My budget will also propose and fund a reform pay plan for state employees. Our current system locks good workers in at lower rates of pay, leading to high turnover, more training costs, and offers no incentives for advancement or good performance. The new pay plan will help us reward those high performers and move our state toward a more professional, higher achieving workforce. The budget also provides $3 million for pre-K. These funds are designed for improvement in quality instruction and to require and provide for more highly trained teachers. The budget also meets the essential needs of our state. It fully, fully funds education adequacy as has been defined by the Adequacy Committee of the General Assembly. It also provides $100 million over the biennium for education facilities. And let me just do a parenthetical note here. $100 million for education facilities that is required under the current state of the law in Arkansas. I hope that as we move to the future that there will be a reevaluation of those facilities requirements because $100 million uh, every biennium is really, really a lot of money. And it's tough to make it match as you can see as you go through the budget line by line. We'll also have $5 million to continue the computer coding initiative that has brought great success in Arkansas. It funds the prescription drug monitoring program. Previously that was funded with one-time money that is incorporated into the budget now as a line item. And the budget meets the immediate and urgent need of our foster care system. Let me elaborate on that just a minute. The foster care program in Arkansas has seen a significant increase in the number of children in care. Foster care numbers are growing at a rate close to 20% growth annually. The children in our care are state responsibilities, and we cannot shortchange the children or our state responsibilities. For that reason, funding for Division of Child and Family Services will increase by $26.7 million in FY18 and $11.9 million in FY19. Those additional funds will translate into more workers who are better trained and more children finding a safe home where they have the care they deserve. I've challenged DHS also to use these resources to not only address the need but reverse the trend. So hopefully we can get a handle on what has been considered a crisis and is a crisis in Arkansas. At your urging, the budget also restores $1 million for libraries and $1 million for senior citizen centers that was previously reduced. And now let's talk about tax cuts. The budget reflects a necessary and cautious and conservative approach to tax cuts. A $50 million tax cut is included, but it will begin in the second year of the biennium and have a minimal $25 million impact in FY19. The state budget has fully absorbed the landmark $100 million tax cut from the last session 
and individual income tax collections continue to be strong, but we continue to monitor, monitor the sales tax collections and trying to determine why they are not as robust. My priority on the $50 million in cuts will continue to focus on reducing the income tax burden on Arkansans and grow our economy. I will lay out the details of this tax cut prior to the session in January and looking forward to working with the General Assembly as you consider my ideas as well as other ideas that are on the table. Finally, there is no money set aside for legislative or executive GIF. That is the result of priorities and the many different funding needs from foster care to education to public safety. I think as you see the uh, uh, line items in the budget as well as the schedule for the GIF funding, you will see that uh, it has been stretched uh, it is being utilized effectively for our resources, and there's just simply uh, no money when you meet those priorities uh, for the GIF executive or legislative arena. This budget meets the needs of our state, maximizes the opportunity for economic growth, and continues to emphasize efficiencies, reform, and savings. I look forward to working with the General Assembly as we serve together the people of Arkansas. Chairman, thank you very much for the opportunity to present this, and I will turn it over to you, of course, and then uh, those presenters that follow. Thank you, Governor.